we see these matchsticks, and I want to set them to fire as quickly as possible. To do this, you get from me uh, four matches, and with each of these matches, you can light another match, and you have to let the other matches in place. Which four matches would you light? Well, I've tested this yesterday, <laughs> um, and this was actually the setup that worked best. I still have my eyebrows, um, so I didn't put the whole place on fire. Uh, but this worked best, and why am I showing you this? Um, it's a weird experiment. Um, it's actually to show you that to spread a fire as quickly as possible, you have to spread the, the spark as well. Um, and I've been working now in canteens for two years, and I believe that also in canteens, this is the same. Uh, you have to spread the spark to let the, the fire spread as quickly as possible. So imagine all these clusters of matches represent a department. Uh, in a canteen, it's not unusual that food goes, uh, that food, the food production relies on many departments. The management departments goes with the finances, etc. The kitchen, of course, makes the, the food. Facility managers, um, they might um, order the plates, for example. And there's also people that are more indirectly involved, sometimes care personnel like nurses, but also teachers can, can be involved. And in order to reduce food waste and ca canteens successfully, um, I believe that you have to involve all these departments. Um, Let's say you don't do this, um, and I've met very enthusiastic facility managers who made a brilliant plan uh, to cut food waste in their canteen, but they, did, they just didn't get it sold to their colleagues. So they were very lonely flames, and they burned up without any change happening. Or imagine that you go to a kitchen and you ask them, oh, how can we reduce food waste uh, in, your, in your canteen? They will come up with a very good plan, without a doubt. Um, but they will just not take into account that probably the nursing staff will have a, a double workload. Um, so there won't be much fire to be found in the, the, care, uh, the care department there. So to spread the fire to fight against food waste in a canteen, you have to involve all these departments. So how do we do this? Let's see. Um, we have a three-step approach at Foodway. We call it the food waste journey. And we invite everyone, uh, uh, we invite representatives of each of these departments and we put them in a team, let's say a task force. Uh, you can call them the amazing zero food waste task force of the canteen. Um, and we take them on this journey. We start with a diagnosis where we assess the problem and look where, where it occurs and how big it is. Then we co-create a strategy with them, and then we go uh, to the most important step, of course, the action. Um, I've done now several of these food waste journeys and canteens over the, the past two years. And today we will go through a mini version uh, of this food waste journey um, to show you how we empower people to take action in their canteens uh, against food waste. So as said, we start with diagnosis. Um, this is a very essential step. Why? Because I think David already showed that very good, that information is everything. Um, you have to know what the problem exact, exactly is to, to know um, what you can do against it. But that's not the only reason why we start off with a diagnosis. We, we do it as well because generally um, these measurements, this monitoring, um, it's very shocking results. If you tell uh, the, the amazing task force, like, okay, we have your results right here, um, we have 20 to 30, almost, also sometimes 40% of food waste in your canteen, and this is a shock. Um, I hope this also shocks you, if you think about maybe the lunch of your, of your kid at school, that of all the food they, that is prepared there, 30% is uh, can be thrown away. It's really shocking. And we use this shock as a, an ignition, let's say, an ignition to power change in uh, the canteen. 
So what do we measure? This depends a bit on from canteen to canteen. Um, they can choose this them, themselves. You have really simple measuring methods from just weighing your trash cans to very detailed, uh, continuous, meticulous um, measurement methods that give you a lot of information. In general, you can say the more detailed you measure, the more information you get, so that's good. Um, they always, the, 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 the task force in place can decide how they, can, uh, how they want to measure. Um, the only thing I, I'm really stressing always is that you have to know what you are measuring. Um, many people come proudly to me and they say like, oh, food waste, in my organization, not a problem. Um, and this is of course possible, there are people that are doing really an amazing job. Um, but if you start talking to them, then you, you, and you get into more detail, it appears that they only look at the kitchen, for example. But of course, plate waste is also food waste. It doesn't matter whether it's in the refectory or in the kitchen, food waste is food waste. So if you measure, look at the whole picture. How do we do this? Um, we, um, you, we, we, we use the methods of Wageningen University, university we ourselves, but again, this depends on the, on the canteen themselves. Um, and we always let the, the task force and the, the personnel themselves measure uh, because they are the perfect people to do this. Uh, first, and, uh, first, because they, uh, they know the organization inside out, uh, they really know how to, to, to go about that. And also because if you involve them in the first step, they're also much more engaged already for the steps to come. Okay, so this data they gather, we put this in a report and we identify the main challenges per canteen. This can be, okay, we've seen that plate waste is the biggest problem here, or kitchen waste, or maybe the hot meal, or maybe we see, oh, you have so much fries left uh, every Friday. So we had identified a few challenges, and this takes the amazing zero food waste task force to the ne next step, building a strategy. Um, here, it is really essential to involve all departments because if you don't do it, you don't have a widely accepted strategy and you really need a widely accepted strategy uh, because if, if everybody accepts it, people will be much more devoted to implement it later. So how do we do this? We invite uh, the task force to a one-day workshop um, and if we ask feedback to the organization we work, the organizations we work with afterwards, they always identify this step as very key in their food waste journey because um, it's just so important for them to step out of their daily routine to meet with all these other departments that are also working on food but they probably never met and they can discuss and they brainstorm um, and they really connect there and this really is a basis for the, the action that is about to come in step three. So how do we uh, motivate, motivate them even more? We, we put this up as a, a kind of quest. This is a challenge they need to overcome, they have a team. And at the end of the day, the results they have is a concrete action plan with concrete uh, measures to be taken. Okay, that's, that takes them to the third step, that's action. Um, and now, to my knowledge or in my experience, there is no uh, solution that you can just copy paste to every canteen. And every canteen has very specific food waste problems and so also very specific solutions. Um, but there are a few, let's say, trends in uh, food waste problems and food waste solutions. And uh, let's have a look at, at some of them. Um, so one is... Um, there is a slide going there. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Well, one is the in inadequate portion sizes. Uh, you can have school canteens um, that give uh, the same portion to seven year olds and to a 16 year old. Now, normal kids give the same amount of fruit. Uh, normal kids don't eat as much uh, when they are seven as when they are 16. Uh, I say normal kids because when I was seven, I ate everybody's food. <laughs> um, 
But uh, so normally you need a gradient there in your portion size. Uh, another great example uh, is a hospital in Bruges. They served 250 grams of meat um, to, their, to their visitors in their canteen. And uh, of course there was a lot of food waste there. And what they did, they halved uh, this portion. And um, to compensate for that, the visitors could can get all, all uh, like access to a vegetable buffet, uh, all they can eat. So this is really nice because uh, their diet is now more healthy and more sustainably, and uh, there's less food waste. So that's uh, portion sizes. Um, another common uh, problem for a chef is that they cannot predict what um, that they cannot predict what you will eat this afternoon. Eh? The chef can do magic. Uh, I think Maxime will show us that later. But reading minds and predicting the future is not uh, one of their abilities. And luckily, uh, big, data, big, big data can do that. It's a bit spooky, but they can read your mind and they can predict the future. Um, so applications like Winnow, Lean Path, and Weight Watchers, what they do is based on historical data, they try to predict um, what you will eat this afternoon, and because these predictions are much better than a, a chef's general prediction, uh, there's much less food waste. So these are very technical, um, both very technical um, solutions, and unfortunately, you cannot solve all food waste problems in canteens with data and numbers. Um, much has to do also with internal organization and internal communication. Um, for example, much information goes from a client to a chef and back, and there's a lot of noise uh, in that information. And to solve this, visit Tweede Kade. Um, it's a, a small youth institution uh, for uh, youngsters with uh, mental disorders. Um, there, the mentors order food for the kids. And some mentors do it very well, and other mentors do it less well, with a lot of food waste as a result. So what they did there is that the mentors that did it very well, they, they asked them to train their peers. So, and, and to motivate them, they said, okay, if we reduce food waste, and if we see a financial gain, this will go um, to things that the personnel would like. Um, so, and this worked uh, very well. Um, in a few months, they had 30% less food waste. So that's a, that was a very successful result there. Let's see if I can get, I'm improvising here a bit, because the order of my cell change. Um, there's one last problem, and it's not on the slide, that I want, that I, I want to share with you, and it's with eating habits. Um, I will give you a very good example. Last month, um, we were in a school, and we measured there that 90% of all the vegetables were thrown in the bin. And this is really shocking, because imagine these kids don't eat any vegetables. Um, so you cannot juggle with numbers there or with data. Uh, this, it speaks for itself that the whole school there will have to put an enormous effort in getting these kids to eat vegetables. And that's not only the chef, like I say, it's also the teachers and even the parents that will do, have to do uh, an extra effort there. So these are a lot of um, examples of action taken in canteens. And does it end there uh, once the, the canteens take action? Uh, no, of course not. Once they take action, uh, they, they have to actually start all over again. They, they do a diagnosis again to know what they, they did, huh? to, to see, do we have impact? And based on, on these results they get here, uh, on the, at the impact measurement, they can adjust their strategy, maybe focus on something else, and then um, take action again. And this they will do on and on and on until they have really no food waste anymore in their canteen. We have some really nice results with this um, 
with this approach. Uh, for example, a hospital in Bruges has, in less than one year, they saved 40%, uh, they reduced their food waste by 40%. Uh, and they have uh, an annual saving of 50,000 uh, 50, uh, euros. Um, so we have really, really nice results there. Um, and I, I hope this uh, convinces you that engaging stakeholders uh, when reducing food waste and canteen is really essential. And if the numbers don't uh, convince you yet, then um, I can tell you it's so much fun uh, to, um, to engage these stakeholders. It's nice uh, work. Everybody is against food waste. I think uh, Karina already said it. Use the energy that you have from your stakeholders and have fun. Um, and to help stakeholders a bit, we at Foodwin, we mapped this food waste journey in a few manuals. Check them out uh, on the website. Um, and if you are a canteen or you know a canteen uh, and you don't find the information you need in the manual, then please do contact us. Uh, we will be very happy to help you with to set up a measuring process or a tailor-made workshop. Thank you.